Hello, I'm Martin Greenwood. Join me as I take a small group on a walk from Juniper Hill via Cottesford to Fringford. These villages are now forever associated with Flora Thompson, author of Lark Rise to Candleford. She was born here in Juniper Hill, uh, Lark Rise, and this is where we start our walk. Good morning everybody, Good morning. Good morning. and welcome to Lark Rise. As some of you I'm sure know, um, this is the birthplace of Flora Thompson. She was born here in 1876, um, born in a little cottage around the corner here, which is long gone, and I don't think anybody knows exactly where it was. The year after Flora was born, the family moved to the end house just round the corner. Flora lived there until 1891, when she moved to Frankfurt to work in the sub post office. In the late 1800s, Juniper Hill was a very poor hamlet, reflected in a quote from Flora, the spot God made with the leftovers when he finished creating the rest of the earth. Originally, in the mid-18th century, a few cottages were built here for the poor by Cottesford, so the hamlet became very much a home for the poor, and almost all the men were agricultural labourers. Moving on, and going round the rise, as the locals used to say, we reach Queenie's cottage. This was the home of Queenie and Twister Macy, much smaller then than it is now. Queenie in particular was a great attraction to the children. She was a lace maker and beekeeper. There is a wonderful section in the book talking about her tanging the bees. This involved pursuing the swarm when it rose while tanging a spoon on a coal shovel. She said that this was to ensure that the bees settled in her garden and that she had a legal right to them. Around the corner we come to the end house where the Timms family lived from 1877. The house would have been much smaller in those days and with large families as the norm it would have been cramped to say the least. The Timms family had ten children although four died very young but there would have been six children living in the house at one time. Flora's father Albert was a stonemason whose earnings were higher than others who worked on the land so the house would have been a little superior to the other cottages. Continuing our walk, we take the footpath through the allotments and across the fields to Cottesford. This is where Flora went to school and to church each Sunday. Cottesford was once largely owned by Eton College, given to them by Henry VI when he founded the college in 1441. St Mary's Church dates from the 13th century, and this is where Flora would have come with her brother Edwin every Sunday. They would sit where there is now a plaque to Flora Thompson, and the memorial to those who died in the First World War. At the bottom of the list is Edwin Timms, who was killed on the Somme in 1916. Leaving the church, we now follow the footpath to Fringford. In Fringford, Eton College also owned some 70 acres, but on the whole the village was dominated by the squires of Shellswell Manor, particularly the Harrison and Slater Harrison families. In the 19th century, 
It was also dominated by a series of well-connected, wealthy rectors who were prepared to make substantial contributions to the church and to the parish, although the population was largely dependent on agriculture. Reaching Frigford, we follow Ghost Alley through to the church. The name probably came about as the undertaker used to wheel the bodies from his premises along the alley to the church. St Michael and All Angels Church dates from the 12th century, but has undergone many changes since then. The beautiful pew ends were individually carved by a local man, Charlie Freeman, who lived on the green. Another local man, John Rogers, who was a carpenter, built the organ. The two gargoyles on the pillars date from the 13th century. They show the men making faces at the women probably a stonemason's humorous idea. The plaque on the wall commemorates Flora's time in the village and was unveiled in 2010 by actress Linda Bassett, who played Queenie in the BBC series. Leaving the church, we walk up Main Street to the forge. This was both a forge and the sub-post office in the 1890s, when Flora worked here. Keziah Whitten, Dorcas Lane in the TV series, was in charge since her husband John had died shortly before Flora arrived. Keziah was a rather large lady, some 18 stone. When she died in 1898, she was in a bedroom upstairs, and given her size, it was found impossible to take her down the narrow stairs. This meant that the window had to be taken out so she could be lowered down a ladder. You can see where that window was bricked up again. She, with her husband and son Alexander, are all buried in the church graveyard. The AA sign at the front of the house was put up about 1926, when it was common practice to put these signs up on village forges. The post office moved to other premises in Rectory Lane in the early 1900s, and the forge closed in the 1950s. The house is now a private residence. The classic setting of a medieval village around a green survives with old farmhouses around it. And on the far side, the building, which was the National School, was built in 1866. The school closed in 1973, and the children moved across the green to a new school next to the village hall. Flora worked in the post office until 1897, and after that she moved away from Oxfordshire and rarely returned. She moved to the Aldershot area, and in 1903 she married John Thompson, another post office worker. They continued to work in post offices in various places and in 1928 moved to Dartmouth in Devon. It was here that she started to write the trilogy Lark Rise to Candleford, which was published in 1945. The initial 5,000 copies were pre-sold, a great achievement at the time, and Flora lived just long enough to see the success of her work. She died in 1947 and is buried in Dartmouth. As a group walk off to the Butcher's Arm for some well-earned refreshment, thank you very much for joining me.
I do hope that you will attempt the walk and that you have enjoyed some of the glimpses of the countryside here. If you do attempt the walk, please be aware that it is about four miles, that there are numerous styles and that there are no facilities or route. Please also observe the country code at all times.